Hey guys, it's Jordan here from Switchwatch. How are you all doing today? Today I've got a review of Cast of the Seven Godsends on the Nintendo Switch. Thanks to Merge Games for providing this review copy so I can tell you if it's worth your hard-earned cash or not. Now the question of the day is, what random game on Steam would you love to see on the Nintendo Switch? There are so many games on Steam, but let us know which one you would like to see in the comments below. Let's get on with it. Cast of the Seven Godsons is a step back in time into the late 80s and early 90s arcade scene in which action platformers were so prevalent. There is a story here which is a little bit of a throwaway even if they did try. There is dialogue and some simple cutscenes setting the story. Rather than going for the classic knight saving the princess, it's actually the king searching for his kidnapped infant son and heir to the throne. Kidnapped by the cronies of a once thought defeated evil being, you go on your quest guided by the seven gods who stopped him previously. You are not going to play this kind of game for the story though. I suspect, like myself, many of you will be speeding through the dialogue as fast as possible, not too long after. Especially considering all the spelling and grammatical errors found here, it's odd coming from a UK publisher and something that really should have been addressed for quality control purposes. So yeah, the story is not that great, but it's nice that they tried somewhat, I guess. The sound isn't too bad, there's an odd eclectic mix of different genres that sound okay but don't always fit the theme. Some do, some don't. It sounds okay though and I don't think it hit me enough to notice how odd things were at time, only when I specifically listened out for it. Overall not a bad effort in the audio department. Visually the game is okay too, I'm sure many of you will be happy to see that they've not gone for the retro pixel style, which we see so often. Instead it's a hand drawn effort. Just looking at it, it's obviously not a game in the same league as something like Wonder Boy, also on the Switch, and honestly it does look on the cheap side of things. Animation frames are low, giving a very unsmooth look to things, a little stilted here and there, although I do appreciate the backgrounds a little more. And you can see just by looking at it, it doesn't look great. It does come across as a little amateurish. Now, while I may not always jump at the chance to review a platformer unless it's a big budget release, when a game is described as a love letter to ghouls and ghosts, then I've just got to try it. What with that particular Super Nintendo game being one of my favourite games ever. Now, I never expected Cast of the Seven Godsons to reach up to that game's perfection, so don't worry, I'm judging it fairly by its own merits. Right off the bat you'll notice how fast paced this is compared to its inspiration, your character blasts around the screen which is nice, although a bit more nuance on the speed would have gone a long way. It's either full speed or standing still. His jumping is pretty spot on and the room for error on landing on platforms is pretty generous which is nice. Seven Godsons doesn't really do a good job of explaining what's going on in regards to the gameplay. Picking up items is a bit of a shrug of the shoulder. Sure, things happen, but it's not always really focused or explicit enough as to actually what is happening. It will take a couple of playthroughs before you catch on with the game's mechanics, especially with weapons and accessing your magic. It's very basic in its control scheme as it just uses two buttons, jump and attack. There are various different weapons you can pick up and wield. These are found in orb-like chests that pop up from time to time in a secretive manner if you walk on the right spot. You have the classic dagger, a mace, hammer, sword. Many of them can be pretty awkward to use. Some will have a higher throwing arch, while the sword has almost no reach. On the other hand, it's super strong, so each weapon does have its strengths and weaknesses, so that is a nice tactical point to the game. I don't think the weapons come often enough however, since you're often stuck with the same weapon for long periods of time. Of course, I could be missing some of the hidden orbs, but it would have been nice to see them more often in a casual playthrough. You have different armor levels, your normal basic one, a more advanced one, and a super powerful one. Then there's your magic for which you collect energy. You can initiate it by holding the attack button. Holding it down will cycle through different elemental powers to which you can transform into. This is actually pretty cool, and each of the elemental powers have their own advantages, especially against bosses which you will definitely need to exploit in order to progress. This leaves a lot of weaponry elemental combinations, which is actually a rather interesting aspect of the game. Due to the short nature and the generally once per level offering of the god powers, you don't really get to experiment enough in my opinion, which is kind of sad. If they focused more on that and had it more regularly, I think it could have been a really good decision. 
There is a good bit of trial and error here which may put off some gamers, but there is a nice dose of skill involved too. You really need to be on your toes when it comes to Cast of the Seven Godsends, an easy game it is not. While there are four difficulty modes, even easy mode will present you with a tough challenge for the first time around. Indeed, I failed to complete the game three times before I actually managed to get through it without using up all of the credits. Yes, there are credits and if you use them all, it's game over. Start from scratch, buddy. Even games like Ghouls and Ghosts of Castlevania weren't that cruel. Challenge fiends may love this, more casual gamers will probably be frustrated. You need to think about that before diving into this game. There are dozens of enemy varieties that you will encounter throughout the short runtime, including plenty of bosses too. I'll give credit where credit's due, they didn't just rely on a couple of different enemies per stage, instead there are lots of unique monsters to each world. Some are pushovers, others take a lot of attacks before they fall. One super annoying thing are the never ending flying enemies that will irritate you by hovering around and generally being a nuisance. They're never ending and one of the lesser welcome throwbacks to old games. The standard ground enemies are fair game, but the flying ones kind of sour the experience somewhat, they're just, they're just too annoying. When it all works, it's quite fine. It can be fun to play and you can see how much the developers adore the inspiration for this one. Sadly, there are also times where a lack of care or attention to detail makes it stutter from a good game into an awkward one. It can feel like enemies and traps were placed haphazardly rather than being well thought out. Sprinkle some here, some there, job done. That's not how classic games were made. I mean, it's not bad, it's just not special either. It's just a bit too basic for my liking. It lacks the bit of quality necessary to elevate it to something like Shu. Sure, it's only made by a few people, but so are plenty of games that have more polish and quality. It's not bad. It's just not of high enough standard to compete or look anything other than a little amateurish. It has a certain charm nostalgic gamers may like, but even for me, a huge fan of this game's inspiration, struggle to truly enjoy the gameplay on offer here. For value, the game comes in at £9.99 and $12.99. I think for what is on offer here, it's a little higher than I would have expected. Something a little more competitive to what A Whole New World offered would have been more ideal, being a couple of pounds and dollars cheaper. When you look at the excellently priced shoe, you do need to question the ambitions of this game's price. Overall, Cast of the Seven Godsends isn't quite the godsend I was hoping for. I'm not always up for platformers, but occasionally they can really resonate with me if they hit the right marks. Sadly, this effort fails to achieve what games like Shovel Knight and Shoe did for me, instead falling into the same category as the likes of A Whole New World, which I reviewed not too long ago. A lot of promise, but just a little too much lack of care and attention into creating a compelling experience. I'm sure some of you will find enjoyment out of it, but for me, it's just about an average game rather than a good one. 5.5 out of 10. Okay guys, thank you ever so much for watching. We've done it, we've reached 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so, so much. We'll be doing a massive giveaway very, very soon. If you're a regular Switch watcher, then you know what to do. Hit that like button and leave a comment below. Answering the question of the day, what random game on Steam would you like to see on the Switch? If you're new here, then why not consider subscribing for more awesome Switch content far, far into the future. We aim to be the best on YouTube. And finally, head over to the website switchwatch.co.uk for news, reviews, and features. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch, and I will see you next time. Take care.